Okay, as promised, um, here comes the tutorial on how to make a little crossword puzzle app. Um, I'm kind of uh, going out here. This this one's going to be a little bit tougher. It's got a little bit, uh, or I said a little bit, a lot more uh, moving parts um, than it might seem. Trying to leverage some of the, the default controls that are available to us from Visual Studio and, and with.NET. Um, if you if you haven't already seen the little teaser I put out, go check take a look at that, and you'll kind of get an idea of what we're going for. Uh, I'm not going to show that here. Uh, we're just going to actually jump right in and start building this thing. But essentially, we're going to have um, two separate forms. Um, one form is going to have our crossword puzzle board. Um, the other form is going to have um, our clues, right? So the number and whether it's uh, down or across, and then uh, you know what the clue is, so that the user of our of our app here can sort of figure out the word and try and plug it in. So I'm going to jump right in uh, again, and we'll create a new project. And I'm just going to call mine uh, WinForm Crossword. Create that. Okay, so let's let's um, let's jump in here first and just kind of do some cleanup like I always do with this one form. Uh, we're going to get rid of the icon, so double click on that makes that go away. We'll change it to crossword puzzle is the title of our window. Um, we're going to actually set the size of the win forms to be a static or default default. Um, value so we aren't going to use the uh, the maximize box we can leave the minimize um, that's fine uh, the size that we're going to go for is actually going to be uh, what did I have 635 and I, I've done this already obviously trying to, to make sure I don't um, stumble as I go through this to help you guys build it because it, it just took me a little bit of effort to, to get through myself so um, don't get discouraged as we go through this. If you think some of this is above your head or out of your league, um, you know, I was on Google trying to figure some of this out myself. So don't get discouraged there. Okay, so um, basically we have a form. Uh, we're going to come over to our toolbox. Uh, we're going to drop in a menu strip right here. Um, what I have in terms of menu is the usual suspects, right? File. Um, and then I also have uh, help and about and then under file we basically have two options one is open puzzle and the other one is exit all right and then um, i'm going to have a data grid view is what i'm going to use as my board now this is probably not the only way to do this certainly it's not the only way to do this um, but it will work uh, i made it i made it work um, there's some some funkiness that we have to do to make this work um, to get a little creative but uh, you know without going out and buying some extra or more advanced components out there from third-party uh, you know control designers um, we can make sort of the the vanilla data grid view work for us in this application um, so I'm going to dock this guy in the parent container so basically all we have at this point <clears throat> is our menu strip and a data grid view and we're gonna do a lot of tweaking to this data grid view um, out of the out of the gate so uh, just kind of hang with me. Uh, some of it we're going to do via the properties. Some of it we're going to do uh, using the code behind the form. Um, but but you'll see kind of how this all plays out. And, and I'll try and go slowly to make sure I don't um, lose you guys and uh, I don't overlook something myself. Um, so let's, uh, you know, before, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and tackle some of the easy stuff, right? So exit, we've done this before. Um, double click on it creates our, our method for us, our event handler for us, and we're just going to say simply application.exit, and there we go, right, so that works now. Um, same with help about, right, message box dot show, uh, and we're going to use the second one, is it the second one? The third one, the text and the caption, so um, caption is going to be help about, and I'll make the message say, you know, by Chris, whatever doesn't matter whatever you want to do and then because I'm I like to test as I go we'll run this guy make sure we get uh, help if we do help about we get our help about we do file exit our app closes good um, <clears throat> one thing else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set that start position um, for the form to center screen okay All right, so two of the very easiest things we've kind of knocked out there with the menu. We'll tackle open puzzle uh, much later on. Um, 
in, in this video or the next video, whichever. I don't know how fast this will go, but um, may end up having to break this up into two videos. Um, but let's start looking at the first thing that we need to do. Uh, you know, I said this is going to be kind of our crossword puzzle board. Um, and the way that I've set it up um, is I'm going to I'm going to basically just put a static number of columns here, um, 22 to be exact. So simple enough. I'm just going to add a column. I don't care what the name is and I don't care what the header text is because we're going to hide all that anyway. So we're not going to see any of that. Um, we're going to make it read only by default. Um, and we can just basically add till we have 22 columns, right? So I'm clicking 22 times. You'll see 22 columns close. And now what you see is basically those 22 columns. Now, like I just said, I don't care to see the column headers. I don't want to see the row headers. And there's a lot of other things that we want to kind of tweak about this. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and remove the column headers. Okay. So if you select the control, you'll see column header visible. I'm going to set that to false. There's also this guy right here is the row header. We're going to get rid of the row header. Row header visible. Where are you at? Is false. Um, we'll, we'll do some some funkiness behind the uh, the scenes when the form loads to resize all this. So don't worry about going into your, your column models and trying to resize this. But what we do want to do is we want to mess with the default cell. Now in a data grid view, a cell is much as you would expect, right? It's this is a cell, this is a cell, this is a cell column and obviously row uh, but we want to tweak the default um, cell layout where are you at uh, let me find you here so uh, default cell style that's what I'm looking for just kidding all right we're gonna make the control text um, we're gonna leave that black or I'm sorry the four colors gonna be black the uh, back color is going to be black and the four color selection four color is going to be black and we'll say okay I'm also going to set the padding here to uh, one all the way around um, we'll set the alignment to middle center so that will be good and we don't care what color the text is because as you'll see in a, in a little bit or if you looked at the demo, um, this is just going to be the background of, of our crossword puzzle, um, each individual grid. So when we want to actually enable um, one of these cells to be used so that the user can type a value in a letter um, to complete the crossword puzzle, we'll, we'll tweak this the, uh, the way it looks then. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. Um, and you'll see nothing nothing has really changed um, but what I also want to do is I don't want to add um, each of these rows well you don't really have the option frankly uh, from here to add a bunch of rows um, but what I am going to do is basically take away some rights from the user to be able to tweak things about the board I don't want them to be able to add rows so I'm going to set that to false I don't want them to be able to delete rows so that's gonna be false I don't want them to order columns I don't want them to resize rows and then I don't want them to resize columns. So I'm changing all of that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little uh, method back here that we're going to call when the form gets loaded. Now, we need to create an event handler for when the form gets loaded. So if I select the form, I come over to the, uh, the lightning bolt here, and I double click on load, I'll get my form load event. Now remember, this uh, event gets fired every time the form is loaded. Okay, So we're going to basically create a method we can make it private it can be void um, called initialize board doesn't take any arguments right and then what we're going to do is when we load our form we're going to call our initialize board method okay which right now doesn't do anything if we ran this we get an empty data grid view right we have a scroll bar because we have 21 columns um, so you know maybe we can go ahead and we don't we're not going to want a scroll bar on this guy so let's go ahead and go back to our properties and you'll see there is a scroll bars right by default it's set to both I'm going to change that to none okay so now what we're going to get is we're going to get no scroll bar right kind of what we're looking for okay um, back to our initialized board so the first thing I want to do is I want to add 21 um, rows so let's go ahead and do that we'll just do a simple uh, for loop I less than 21 I plus plus and what we're gonna say is our data grid view if we come back and look at this guy I didn't name it anything magical so I'll just you know I'm just gonna leave it 
no, you know what, I'll rename it. I'll call it board. So our data grid view is called board. So I'm going to say board.rows.add. That simple. That's just going to add an empty row um, to our data grid view. It's going to add, frankly, it's going to add 21 of them. Um, before I do that, though, I'm also going to set a couple properties about the data grid view. So we're going to set the background color here. We could just as easily do this. Um, in the properties, but while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and do it here. Uh, default cell style dot back color equals color dot black. So we're just trying to make everything black here, okay, right now. Okay, so what, what I expect to see here is basically a bunch of rows and columns, and that's about it, right? And they're all black. So we got that, got that squared. Okay, now the other thing that we need to start looking at is maybe how we're going to, um, and I left one row off, how we're going to uh, resize these, right? So let's, inside of our initialized method here, let's set the width of each column, right? And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to say for each data grid view column, Data, if I can type, good view column in, oops, we'll call it C for column in board.columns. I want to set the width, right? So C.width is going to be basically the width of the data grid view divided by the number of columns, right? So um, board.width divided by board.columns.count okay and if we run this guy what we should see is we see all of our columns now right like we want to um, let's do the same thing for the rows right we'll set the we'll set the the height for the rows and basically that's going to make it fill out our our form right where we have it where we have it docked so i'm essentially just going to copy this guy over paste it again. So we're going to say the rows now. So data grid view row. And we can make this an R since it's row. Board.rows. And then we're saying R.width. Actually, we want to do height, right? R.height equals board.height divided by board.rows.count, right? And if we run this, we should see nice filled out, right? Everything's looking looking good. Can't do anything here, right? I'm clicking, nothing happens. That's that's by design, right? We haven't done anything yet. <clears throat> um, one more thing we want to do, um, just to be sure, is we want to make all the cells read only. Um, oops, let me run this again. I think I think I already set that, but I'm gonna go ahead and add code in here just to be sure, and uh, and make that make that defined, and and maybe it also give you an idea of how you can sort of uh, iterate through each cell in the data grid view, right? So we're going to have a, a for loop that says int row equals zero. Everything's in zero based, right? So it starts with row zero, starts with column zero. Uh, oops. Board.rows.count row plus plus, right? And then we're going to have another for loop inside of here that's for the columns. Scroll down a little bit. Um, let's make count this call. Call plus plus. And then basically we're going to say is board. Where, where I can always forget this. Oh yeah, this tells you right here, right? So column index and then row index. So board call comma row. So x y or actually goes goes y x. Um, dot read only equals true, right? And so basically what we just did there is make all cells read only, right? Okay. So basically with this, what we've done is we've initialized our board. We have our board kind of looking how we, we want it to look, right? Um, everything looks copacetic. All right. This is kind of going to be the, uh, 
you know, kind of the, the, the default, right? So then what we're going to do down the road here is when we start looking at which cells we want to make uh, a different color, um, we can sort of uh, call another method that will reformat a particular cell that will then solicit the user to provide a value, right, to type something in. So let's go ahead and create the method that we're going to use. And, and it makes sense, right? We're going to pass it some sort of grid coordinates, right? So a, a column, um, you know, index and a row index. And then we can basically tweak some settings about that particular cell, right? So let's create, uh, let's create another method called, uh, and this will be void as well. Um, and we'll call it format cell. And it's going to take a couple different um, parameters. But for now, we're just going to do uh, two of them. We're going to tweak this in a little bit when it makes more sense. But just to get, get the ball rolling on this. So we're going to pass it int row and int column, right? OK. So what we want to say is um, we'll initialize a data grid view cell. And basically, we're going to go get that cell. We're going to say column, row, right? Whatever we passed our method. Okay, so now when we want to tweak the value of the cell, instead of typing board, column, row a bunch of times, we can just now refer to it as C, right? So C dot um, style dot, oops, not state, we want style dot back color. Uh, we're going to change that to white, right? And then we're going to say uh, C dot read only because we want the user to edit this, we're going to change that to false. And then we're going to set the, the selection color, the, the background selection color. Style.selection back color equals whatever you want to make it. Uh, color dot cyan. I don't know. Whatever. Um, we're going to circle the wagons here um, in just a second. But with data grid views, there is a, an attribute called tag. Um, and what tag does is it's basically supplemental data that we can store something in um, that's important to know about the cell. Um, and so what we're going to use this for is um, we're going to make basically make this crossword puzzle a little bit easier. When the user types a letter into a cell, if the letter corresponds to the letter that should be there, we're going to make the text green. If the letter doesn't match what it should be there, uh, we're going to make the text red, right? So, and, and we'll go ahead and, you know, let's go ahead and fill this out. This will make more sense maybe in a little while when we actually start doing this, but I'll show you how it works, okay? Um, so let's, let's add one more parameter here, and we'll say string letter. And so we're going to use this tag property um, to store the letter that should be in that cell, that the user should type in that cell, OK? All right, so we haven't called this method. We just created it, but we haven't called it. So let's do this. Let's, uh, inside of our form load, let's just test our method, right? Let's say um, format cell, and let's pass it cell 5, 5, so column 5, row 5, and let's say letter B, OK? And let's just see what we get. So what you'll see here is now we get a white cell that when we click on it, turns cyan and that we can type a value into it, right? Um, that's kind of what we're going for. So you can imagine we're going to sort of link these together, right? If if the uh, if the word here were was um, hello, we would have H, you know, E, L, L, O would be our word. And then we'd have some clue that corresponds to this. Um, so there's a couple more things that we need to be able to do to this cell. Um, we need to be able to potentially put a number uh, in the corner of the cell, right? So if we want to say it's one across or one down or two across or whatever, um, we're going to come back to that in a few minutes because that's actually where some of the most heavy lifting uh, occurred for me, right? I had I was on Google trying to figure out how to best do this. Um, and so, uh, you know, um, we'll, we'll come back to that in a few minutes when we, when we get there, okay? Um, we'll also come back to um, the functionality of, of making the... Uh, you know, changing the color of the text depending on whether or not the value the user types here matches the tag attribute that we specify down here, okay? So we'll come back to that as well. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead and build the second part of our form, right? The form that's going to show um, the number of the question, the, um, what is what is it, the, uh, oh, across or down, so the direction, and then um, the clue that we want to show, right? <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, 
is I'm going to come back into uh, my Solution Explorer and I'm basically going to right click on the project and I'm going to say add a new Windows form. Okay, so we're going to add a new Windows form and I'm just going to call this Clues because that's kind of what it's going to do. Clues. All right. Um, and what I want to do uh, for this is kind of do a lot of the same formatting that we've already done, right? We're going to hide the icon. We're going to set the size to 400 by 569. Excuse me. Um, the text can be clues. That's fine. Um, start position. We're going to say uh, manual. We're going to change that. Uh, what else do I want to do? I want to add a data grid view on here. Oh, well, I guess I can get rid of this too. We don't want to be able to minimize or maximize this. Maximize false, minimize false. We don't need to see that. It's going to be associated with the parent container is our goal. Um, I think that covers the bases there. Okay, so let's get a uh, data grid view on here and we're going to dock it. And basically we're going to add some columns, right? We're going to get a number column which is going to be read all this is going to be read only right because there's not going to be any typing here um, we're going to get a direction column and we're going to get a clue column right and we'll close that up um, and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to edit the columns okay because what i want to do is you'll see right here there's some there's some gap there so i'm going to i'm going to set this particular column column three to uh fill the rest of the grid so if you come in here and you select clue, you'll see there is a auto size mode. So we're going to say fill. Okay. And now you'll see that kind of fills that out. Um, so a couple other things, right? We don't need the row header. So let's go down here. Let's remove the row header. Um, we also um, don't want to let users add rows. We don't want to let users delete rows. Resize columns. We don't want to let our order columns. We don't want to let them resize columns. And we don't want to let them resize rows. Um, and we can also probably make sense to come in here and kind of resize some of this, right? These are just going to be numbers, probably one to, you know, you're certainly not going to get much more than double digits on the clues. So let's come in here and let's resize this guy. Um, let's say width is, I don't know, 35, right? That's probably a little bit better. And then direction's about right, right? So we can now add rows, that sort of thing to it. Um, and so let's just let's just see if we can add a row to this, uh, kind of take a baby steps, right? So let's come back into our form. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna, cause we're gonna reference this particular form from a couple different spots potentially within our application. So let's declare this, um, this other form instance that we're gonna create as a static variable that we can use. Okay, so, um, the type is going to be the name of the file, right? The class. So clues, clues is our type. Um, we can just give it a name, clue window. How about that? We'll just go ahead and instantiate it. New clues, right? All right. Now, when the form loads, we want to um, obviously show that, right? So we want to show um, our clues window, right? Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and remove this because this was just for testing purposes, right? the format cell call that we have. We have the method down there still, but I don't need to call it right here. Um, so I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna set the uh, default position and, and the desktop location, and then I'm gonna show it, and then I'm gonna basically resize the columns, okay? So let's do this, clue window dot set desktop location. And then basically you have to specify a point, right? Um, oops. So that's our locations of method. Um, we'll say this dot location dot x coordinate plus this dot width plus one, and then this dot location dot y. Basically, what we're saying is. When we launch the the initial form the, that that comes up, when this guy launches, what we're saying is we want the position of the clues form to be right beside it, right? So we're saying get the location of um, wherever this guy starts, add which would be right here, right? You get this point is the top left corner, um, and then we're going to add the width to our x coordinate and then plus one to give it a little bit of space, um, and then the y coordinate is going to be the same, right? 
So that should be good there. Um, and then what we also want to do, uh, I think I already did this in the properties, but we'll go ahead and set it here anyways. Start position equals start form start position. Start position dot manual, just in case. A little redundant maybe. Um, then we're going to say the clue window is we're going to, oops, we're going to show it, right? That's what we want to do. And then um, what I'll do is I'll basically just go ahead and um, resize the, the columns on here. So we basically set up some columns, but we can resize this basically in, in an effort to make sure that the clue has the most amount of space possible, right? Um, so we this guy right here is called data grid view one. So let's rename him and we'll call him clues or we'll call him clue table. How about that? So there's no confusion. All right. So if I say clue window dot clue table, you'll notice that I won't find it, right? And that makes sense for one reason. We haven't changed the modifiers on this particular form, or I'm sorry, on this particular data grid view. If you, uh, if you select the data grid view and you look at the modifiers, you'll see it's private, right? There it is. So let's make this guy public so that we can reference it from outside of the class that we're in, um, which is what we're trying to do from form one, right? We're trying to reference a data grid view in the clues class um, from uh, a different class, form one class, right? So if I change that modifier, now I can see the clue table and basically I can auto resize the columns, right? Auto resize columns. Okay. Let's see what we get when this happens. Um, you'll notice that you can probably, it's probably off your screen, but you'll notice that it, it opened up right beside the form, right? Now, what I would like to do is always kind of keep these two together. So this is kind of a, uh, a small tweak that we can do. Let me see how I'm doing on time. 26 minutes. Um, so this is probably a small tweak that we can do. Um, basically, anytime we move this, we want this guy to snap back into place, right? Um, so let's go back into our form. Go into our select our form and let's basically say um, we want to look for like form I forget what it's called I think it's form uh, what is it called location changed that's it location changed location changed and when the location changes basically we want to base uh, move the clues window that we created um, along beside the form wherever we let go of it, right? So we'll say clue window dot set desktop location. Actually, you know what? I'll just copy and paste, right? Set desktop location to this, right? Shrink that a little bit. And now uh, what we should see is every time we move um, that window, uh, it should come with it, right? So now they're kind of stuck together. Now you can move this separate, but as soon as you move the main form again, it's going to snap it back together, right? Okay. Now you could simply put, uh, you know, this, the exact same um, sort of logic uh, or event around this form if you wanted to. I'll leave that up to you, however you want to do that, okay? All right, so what we have so far basically is the UI. The UI is built. Um, what we need now is to be able to populate this table, right, with clues. Um, we need to be able to um, populate um, or, or, or basically manipulate our grid to show um, um, where we want the user to provide input, essentially, uh, according to the clues. So I'm actually running up against 30 minutes right here, and with Camp Studio, who knows how much time I'll get. So um, before before I hit the max um, size of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause right here, and I'll pick up uh, on the other side in just a minute, and we'll keep going with this. So um, see you in a minute. Thanks.